like this. Going back to infinity. Um, so here's the secret. Let, let us see if you, you, you assume that there is a finite number before this. Oh, well, let's finite. It's not going to solve the problem, right? You've got to have yeah. uh, an infinite number in order to guarantee that the finally tuned universe will appear simultaneously. So the difficulty, and I think it might be the same problem here. In order for this to happen, this kind of universe has to have, have to be literally infinitely fine tuned in order to get it to go through an infinite number of oscillations prior to today. Otherwise, what happens is quantum fluctuations occur as the universe recollapses, which will, re -pre which will prevent it from either going back to the expansion phase or it would take off you know, and just expand forever and we contract again. So the funny thing about these oscillating universes is that far from solving the fine tuning, they actually have to be fine tuned to an incomprehensible precision in order to do this kind of activity. Uh, moreover, it's a fine tuning of a very fine sort because there is no beginning. So, how can you set the initial fine tuned conditions when there's no beginning? It has to be a kind of a causal fine tuning without a beginning. So, it's very strange. George Ellis, who is a great contemporary cosmologist, has written on this and pointed out these problems with this attempt to solve the fine tuning. Basically, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I given a large number of attempts. Yeah, uh, yeah you, could, you could just say, okay, there's a finite number, but I think you're still going to have the problem of the quantum fluctuations occurring during the collapsing phase. That it's going to require fine tuning in order for this to keep on going. In the sense of having it back in or back in. Yeah, to, for it to, to recontract and then bounce back just right, recontract and bounce back. This is going to require a lot of fine tuning. So it doesn't really get around the fine tuning, it just kicks it upstairs to another level. You're, you're, so you're basically saying it doesn't, it may not, it may not go back to zero, but it goes down to some intermediate point. It goes yeah, back. yeah, that, that's right. I, it can't go back down to a singularity because you can't go through a singularity. So it would have to go back down to some finite size and then bounce back again. Yeah. Uh, there's all kinds of problems. So who was that author you mentioned again? Uh, George Ellis. Um, He's a, he was once described to me by a cosmologist as the man who knows more about cosmology than any other living human being. He's a professor at Cape Town University in South Africa. He had an article on the multiverse in the August issue of Scientific American, which is very good. So if you get Scientific American about two months ago, George Ellis has the cover story. Uh, and